Hey there, this is David and welcome back to Let's Play Legend Heroes Chosen the Sky's second chapter. Today we are being chased on an airship and having a shit ton of guns firing at us, but, you know, because we're still in Joshua, they seem to be firing like two feet to the right, two feet, you know, below us. And we have great evasive maneuvers. Even, yeah, it's like, how are they missing us? I, I don't understand. It's like, the ship is right there. They're not firing back. Hell, there's a third one right there, and he's still missing. Come on now. Eh, they're pathetic. Whatever. This is bad. Those guys chasing us seem pretty good. The pilots have been put through one of the society's piloting focused enhancement programs, most likely. They won't be very good at adapting to the unusual, but for more common tasks like chasing down a ship, they're very good. I get it. They're like those guys from earlier. If they're bad at adapting, though, maybe we can cause some kind of accident. Huh? We're hit? No, that wasn't our ship. Well, then, whose ship was it? Oh, whoa! Damn! The enemy's ship, I assume? Oh, hey! It's, uh, Josette and the, uh, Sky Bandits. Awesome! That's no way! The Bobcat! But why? Joshua! Joshua, you're on that ship, right? That voice. That voice. Yeah, it's me. What are you guys doing here? I thought you'd be at a liberal by now. Heh, my brothers got all worried that you might run into a problem, so we've been shadowing that flying whale for a while. Heh, really? Who was the one begging us to follow Joshua, looking all worked up and ready to faint? K Kyle! Enough, you two. Besides, lad, we've had a little payback to give the society ourselves, and we thought we could stick around here until we settled our other debt. See, thank you. You saved me. Huh, yeah, you better be grateful. We've had an eye on you for a while and noticed you weren't firing back. There's some kind of problem? I had to take a ship with no armaments. It's proven to be a bit of an issue. I can imagine. Well, what do we do then? Well, we'll split them in two. You can lose one, right? It's a plan then. Blessings of Adios be with you. Awesome. So they're going to help us out and we just have to uh, lose one while the other guys shoot the other ones down, I assume. We don't really get to see what happens to the other ones, actually. We just kind of lose them in a black screen. Huh, like every good JRPG, they don't want to explain it or show it, they just do black screen. Okay, yeah, whatever. And it's peaceful music now! We're fine! Black screen fixes everything! Eh, who am I to complain? Back to Bahamut Lagoon. I really like that game. The more I talk about it, the more I'm like, oh my god, I need to play that game again. It's such a good game. Maybe I'll play it later. Who knows? Really, the music. The music's just amazing in that game. Okay, well, we're not being chased. Yeah, we completely lost them. One thing that's weird here is that Estelle's dialogue shakes, but Joshua's dialogue box is, you know, static. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess they are kind of okay. Yeah, and then here we go with Joshua with his static dialogue box. Why is Estelle shaking? That's uh, such a pain in the ass to read a shaking dialogue box. Okay. Well, I just saw us as two parties bound to a contract, but I suppose relationships between people aren't that simple. Huh? What's this all of a sudden? Put two people together and maybe they'll fight. Maybe they'll be friends. All kinds of stuff can happen. That's just how people act, you know? How people act was never very clear in the world that I lived in. Kill? Or be killed, take, or be taken from. Until I met you, my life was an endless cycle of such simplicity. But even you had some good times with Lowell and your sister, right? Lowell told you about that, did he? It's true, I have those memories, but they feel like somebody else's. After my heart was shattered, my memories of Hamil were no longer my own. I think it's because I gave up being human and chose to become a puppet. I do clearly remember my sister's death. She and I were attacked by a man lying in wait for stragglers. The man swatted me away and forced my sister to the ground. At the time, I was too young to know what he probably meant to do. All I knew was that he was hurting my sister and I had a bad feeling, so I grabbed onto the man's back. I ended up getting crushed and thrown off immediately. Somehow, though, I'd managed to get my hands on the man's gun. Thinking about it, I wonder, did I have the talent for killing people even then? I'd never been taught how, but I still removed the safety and pulled the trigger with no hesitation. The man fell over, spewing blood from his mouth, looking confused. At the moment, I finally realized that I'd shot a man. He wasn't quite dead yet, though. He jumped up, 
combat knife out, screaming and gurgling incoherently with murder in his eyes. I curled up and closed my eyes, like I was being attacked by a wild animal, but there was no impact. I was embraced by something soft. When I opened my eyes, there was my sister, gently smiling at me. Ban had collapsed at some point, and Lowell was standing there, dumbstruck with horror. My sister, cradled by Lowell, gave me her harmonica, and then she closed her eyes. I remember every detail, you see. But even talking about it like this doesn't make me feel sad. It's just a slight tugging at the heart, like reading a stranger's diary. And the same's true of my time with you. I do, I do think I was changed a little by touching your warmth. I learned happiness and joy with you, and finally came to think of you as someone dear. But somewhere, it all felt as if it was distant. I suspect that's what my real self was feeling, the empty void of the broken puppet that's Joshua Astray. Is his last name pronounced like Ash Trey? Or is it Ash Trey? Just to me, it basically it's just like a little a little difference, but it sounds the same, like like an ashtray, like you put the cigarette out in. I don't know. Maybe it sounds better in J in Japanese. Who knows? This is goodbye, Estelle. Please don't chase after me anymore. I was a little happy to see you one last time, but even so, we shouldn't be together. Being with someone like me will never be good for you, and to be frank, you'll only be a burden to me. You're a terrible liar, you know that? I guess this is Estelle speaking from the heart. Joshua, listen. We've seen and heard a lot since you left, and now, I think I understand. I understand the reason you left, the real reason, the one you haven't even admitted to yourself. You can't bear to be with me because your heart's broken? You feel like being with me is someone else's story that you can never, ever have? Come, come on! I'll be a bad influence on you? Or you'll hold me back? What? That's all a bunch of lies! Every single one! Especially that last one! They aren't lies! No, Joshua. Really. Listen. I understand now. You're really, really scared. You think it's your fault that your sister died, and you never, ever forgive yourself if something happened to me. That's why you ran away from me that night. Everything else was just pinned on afterwards. Huh, that's ridiculous! Weissman's conditioning left me incapable of feeling fear. He took away my ability to feel it so that I wouldn't hesitate during an operation. You were a little off target, I'm afraid. No. Darn it, I'm not talking about something so superficial! Joshua, you said you can't help but feel like your sister's death happened to someone else, right? Do you know why that is? Of course. It's because I'm a broken wreck of a human being. Uh, no, no, wrong go. We aren't letting self-pity get in the way here. Joshua, you. You just don't want to remember how awful it was when your sister died. How you blame yourself for it. Unconsciously, you've been trying to think of it as somebody else's problem. To get away from it. A lot of people do that. And on that ship, don't tell me you weren't afraid there. I mean, it was a lot of work to just sneak on board, right? But you didn't even hesitate to help me escape. It's almost as if you were trying to get me away from danger as fast as you possibly could. Danger that you were afraid of. You aren't a broken wreck, Joshua. You're just scared. Mostly because you care for people so much it breaks your heart. And you're lying to yourself about it. That's how I see it, and I know that I'm right. But I can't. Why? Can you... Have you forgotten, Buster? I'm Liberal's number one Joshua Watcher. Now that I know all about your past, too, I'm the biggest authority on Joshua Ashtray in the world. I know more than Weissman or Lowell, even. Joshua scared and Joshua brave. Joshua lying and Joshua honest. My beloved Joshua. I finally found you. I finally reached you. Stop. But I need to say this. I don't want to just be one more person you feel like you have to protect. As long as I'm a bracer, I can't stay away from danger. That's not going to change even if you leave again, Joshua. It's what I have to do to be who I am. And so, Joshua, let's make a promise. A promise? Let's go forward together from now on and protect each other equally. I'm strong enough to be able to cover your back now, Josh. And if you're at my side, there's nothing I can't beat. No matter what kind of crazy nonsense that society throws at me, I won't die. So... You don't need to be afraid for me anymore, I promise. Estelle, I... Oh, he's crying. How... I haven't been able to cry since Karen died. I could never even shed tears as an act, but now... 
It's okay. No one's looking. Cry as long as you want. And I'll just hold you like this. Hits you right in the feels. Almost got me a little choked up the first time that I, uh... Played this. It's, it's, this is one of the things I love about this game. It, it, it goes on, and yeah, there's a lot of dialogue, but it really, really makes you feel so attached to the characters. That was a little embarrassing. No, it wasn't. It was perfectly fine. If a guy wants to cry, let him cry. It's not a big deal. My god. All right. Here. Let me return this. Oh! Seriously, Joshua. This is your only memento of Karen, right? You shouldn't just fob this off on others without thinking, buddy. Yeah. It was a bit thoughtless of me, wasn't it? I was kind of wondering. What kind of person was she? She was friendly to everyone that she met. Almost kind to a fault, and she had dignity born of humility. She and Lowell, the Lowell of back then, were perfect together. I was always a little jealous of them as a child. Friendly and kind and dignified. She was kind of like Chloe then. That's a good comparison, thinking about it. Karen didn't look like Chloe. She had uh, my eyes and hair, but they were similar in spirit. Estelle? Nothing. Speaking of Chloe, you realize that you were with her and everyone else sick too, and not just me, right? He has some serious groveling to do when we get back. Estelle, I do. If you say something like, "Oh, well, I don't have to do the, I don't have the right to go back," I'm just gonna drag you back by your hair, okay? Sure, you were Weissman's spy, but you didn't even know it, right? Even helping the bandits get their shit back was done to try and stop the society, right? If you tell Dad about the society's plans, that'll make it even. That's what they call a plea bargain, right? That's not quite how a plea bargain works. Besides, even if you want to stop the society, you can't get back on that ship, can you? In that case, your only option is to work with us, Buster. And if you hadn't been abducted, I could have destroyed the Glorious as I originally planned. Oh, yeah, sorry. Wait, hold on! How could you say destroy the Glorious so easily? I know it's the society that we're talking about, but you're really going to kill them all? It'll take nothing less to stop Weissman and Lowell, and even then, there's a decent chance that they'll survive the destruction of the Glorious. By the lava. No, actually, I think it's for the best that I got caught. You were going to do something completely crazy, Joshua. Huh. You're all... Estelle's being all cute and naive again, aren't you? No, not at all. It's just that you've matured a lot as a person while we've been apart. But ultimately, you're still Estelle. That makes me happier than I thought possible. Come on, Estelle. Why the heck does Joshua's smile still make my heart race? It's because it's been a while, isn't it? And it still gets me right there. Estelle? Hey, you got along pretty well with that tomboy, right? Oh, you mean Josette? Well, at first we had our differences. Even so, we came to understand each other pretty well by the end, I'd say. Did you kiss her? What? Question, answer, give. Right. Of course I didn't. Our relationship wasn't like that. Oh, good. Well, then. Can I request a do-over of that night? do-over? The first kiss is really important to a girl, you know. And it was your fault that mine got wasted. So you've got to take responsibility, mister! Still, I suppose I do. Aww. Hey, Joshua! And this bitch comes in to ruin it again! Yeah. <laughs> this is so touching. It's such a sweet scene. Probably my favorite scene in the game. It's just this beach scene, the way that it sells so, you know, speaking straight from the heart. She's so forthright, you know, not beating around the bush. It's just a really nice, touching scene. The tomboy! What the heck? You got away too, huh? And I was hoping that you stayed caught. Gee, maybe I should have thrown you at them as a distraction. But I don't think that they like grimy tomboys. Come on, Josette, don't start a fight. I won't object to a brief truce, I hope, Miss Bracer. Yeah, well, you guys did save us back there after all, so thank you, really. We wouldn't have made it without you. There's no need to thank us. Huh, I don't remember saving you. So just keep your thanks to yourself, okay? Huh. Okay, 
One of you's getting dragged off to prison after all, it looks like. That aside, Astray, what are your plans now? We came to ask again if you wanted to come with us, but I'm thinking it looks like we don't even need to ask, huh? Yeah, forgive me. I'm not really certain how things will go from here. Right now, though, I'll be traveling with Estelle. Huh, I see. Whatever, at least there's still a chance. Joshua, remember? You got tired of Miss Airhead over there, you just come right on back to us. You'll always have a place in the Bobcat, okay? Walk over here and call me an Airhead one more time, you greasy tomboy! <laughs> Thanks, Josette. Don, Kyle, I owe you all so much. Hey, that's our line, lad. Good luck and stay safe. Hopefully we'll meet again someday. And off they go. Out of sight, out of mind. I kind of like them, you know. Josette actually has a pretty decent personality, and Kyle's kind of cool too, I've got to say. Estelle, what is it? You do understand that the enemies we've made are overwhelmingly powerful. You were captured primarily as bait to lure me out, I suspect. That way, the Glorious wouldn't be destroyed in Weissman's absence. And to be honest, Lowell probably could have saved the ship after kicking our bodies into the sea. I'm fairly sure the reason that he didn't was out of pity. Pity for how weak I was, I mean. All of the Enforcers are the same. In terms of pure power, they're all masters, far stronger than me, even Renee. We've picked what probably will be the hardest fight of our lives. Yeah. But I do promise, I promise won't ever run from reality again. I'll walk with you until the very end. Joshua, I promise too, to the very end. And thus ends chapter 6, the whereabouts of Bonds. So yeah, I'll save. I've already saved before because you do get an achievement here, which I've already gotten. So let's see what's going on with uh, chapter 7. Or the uh, inter intermission, I guess, between the chapters. Because chapter 7 hasn't officially started. Okay, so now we're just going to see uh, all the different enforcers at the top of their various towers waiting for the ceremony to start. Yeah, okay. I don't know why we have to go and see every single little one, but sure, whatever. She calls herself the Bewitching Bell. Eh, I guess it kind of fits somewhat. Okay. Okay, well, let's get this show on the road. Let's get this started. Let's do this. There's the professor. The moment is upon us. Let us begin stage three of the plan. Auroral, sealed in the darkness where Septium's light does not reach. May you gaze upon our poor material world through your gospel. What the hell? Uh-oh. Yikes! Whoa! What the hell is that? Gaze upon these poor four pillars. They are the final shackles that bind you, simple as they may appear to be, but know that their purpose was long shrouded by the decree of man. With hands which bend at the will of all, reveal their true form. Scheist? Whoa! What's gonna happen here? Holy shit Olas! Well, find out next time. Let's play Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky's second chapter. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day!